Hi, I'm Susan, and today we are going to make this adorable little vampire bat. Even though he's a little bit bloody in the face, he can be quite fun. So let's get started. Now for my bat faces, I'm using five millimeter glass eyes. You can get these off of eBay and you can get them in any size. This is just a piece of clay. You can use any color, any type. I'm just using it to hold down my eyes. They're, they're flat on one side and round on the other. Look, you can see that they're like raindrops. They're not going to lay flat because I want to paint the back of them. So I just put the rounded side down into the clay and it holds it perfectly for me so that I can just paint the back and reverse paint it. Now if I were using the larger ones I may create a more realistic eye but because I'm using such tiny ones I think a solid color would just be much easier and really cute. And I'm just using nail polish. This is a sparkly black one I have and here's just a regular black one I've had. I'm just putting a little dot on the back and you can see by the size of my paintbrush from my nail polish how tiny these are. They're very small. Now if you're looking to paint a more realistic eye I will link below Yvonne Williams dragon eye tutorial. She just does it with glass pieces and nail polish and they are spectacular. It's actually one of the best tutorials I've seen on YouTube. And I'm just doing the solid color black on the other one and letting this dry. Now it's quite globby, so give it a good half hour to set up. Now to create our little tiny teeth or fangs, I'm just going to use a little bit of white clay and I'm just going to create just these little tiny pieces that are just pointy on the end. And I want longer ones. Let me lay these out for you so you get an idea of what I'm doing before I bake these. I want some longer ones and if you want them curved, curve them now and some shorter ones. And I want mine to be a little cartoony looking so I want them silly. I don't want them really scary, just fun. And So I'm just creating some shorter teeth and you want them a bit longer so that they can stick into the clay. And that will give you an idea. And if you want any on the sides, all you're doing is just making these little points and cutting them off. And now these need to be baked. Otherwise, they won't be hard enough to push into the clay. And the easiest way I bake them is just on a piece of cardstock. And you can see how these are. These are already baked and they're nice and hard so that I can push them directly into the clay and bake them for a few minutes because they're going to get baked fully after we bake the face. My face, I'm just get, taking a small piece of clay. Basically, how big I want my face to be and I want it to be a little bit larger than that so I'm just gonna take a little even less off. Now what I'm starting with is a ball. I always like to start with a ball of clay, press it down, and get the shape that I'm really looking for. And I want, a bat face is kind of a triangle, so I want a triangle. Now this is hardly realistic. This is total fantasy, total ridiculousness, because that's what playing with clay is, just fun. And I'm just going to create the basic shape of my face. Now to add my teeth, I'm just going to take an X-Acto blade and cut in a mouth and that will give me an area to add my teeth to. I put this on a piece of cardstock so it makes it a lot easier to move around. I can bake it then on this cardstock when I'm done. Before I add the teeth, I'm going to add a little bit of liquid clay and I'm just going to add it right in the mouth here. This will keep all of those teeth in because they're tiny little pieces. Even though I squish them into the clay, I want to make sure over time that they stay there. And I'm just going to take my larger fangs. Let me make sure these have a little curve to them. Yes, they do. And just push them in. And if you want them to stick out funny or be kind of goofy, this is the time. And just push them in. So whatever, if they're too long, that is not an issue. But I want him to be a, a vampire bat, so. I want them a little bit longer. 
And I want to give him some other teeth. You don't necessarily have to give him any other teeth. I want to give him some other front teeth. And these are going to be too long, so I find it easier to put them in and then squish them in. See how much more fun they are that way? He's like a little Dracula bat. Just have fun with this. It doesn't have to look like anything, it just has to be fun. If you have trouble, just take a pencil eraser and the pencil eraser will push them in better for you. So don't feel if your fingernails are sliding or whatever. Everybody's got a pencil and a pencil eraser, so it's not a, a difficult thing to get hold of. Now you can start to see a mouth. You can make this into a plant, a pumpkin, whatever excites you. If you want it to be a Venus flytrap, this could look very similar to that. Whatever makes you laugh, giggle, or happy, that's what you're going to make it into. Now I'm just taking a snake that's pointy on each end and I am using that to form the upper lip. And this will add a little bit of dimension. Now since my fingernails are so long, I have to blend this in. I found just a pencil eraser works the exact same as a clay blender. I prefer the ones that are used a little and rounded. You can see how this one's been very used. And you can form your mouth that way. Now I need to add a nose and because this one's going to be my fantasy bat, I want a triangle nose. One that looks sort of like my chihuahua. And now I've added a little triangle for my nose and I'm just going to blend it in with my eraser just so it seems a little bit more seamless. And I just want to take my needle tool and kind of split down the lip so that it has more of that face. And I want its nostrils to be more spread across. Now, I don't mind these little cuts and tears in the lip. I want him to look a little dirty and nasty. He could be an evil little bat. And it's whatever you pretend. That's the best part of playing with clay. It's pretending half the time. And now I'm just going to create some ears. Now it depends whether you want your ears to be raggedy or even. I'm just going to take a little piece. If you want them even, cut two equal amounts. If you want them a little raggedy, cut two uneven amounts. So to create even amounts, just measure them up to each other. There you would have two more even amounts. Well, actually that one's better. But yeah, we'll, we'll work with the even ones. Now to create the ears, I'm just pressing them down and I'm making little triangles that I am going to fold up into this area and just blend them in with my eraser. And if you want some texture in here or divvies or you want to fold it up, just do that after you get it on. And I'll do the other side the same way. And any designs that you want in the face, just create them as texture using your pencil. You can use anything for texture. You can use stamps. You can use sticks, toothpicks, whatever you have around the house you can use. You don't have to go buy a bunch of stuff to do this. Just start to play. You probably have more things sitting around the house you can use than you realize. Now to create my eyes, I'm once again using two equal parts and I'm just creating a ball. And I'm just going to squish that ball just a little bit. 
I'm taking my eyes which are already dry. This is the one that was the sparkly nail polish. And I'm just going to squish it into that clay. And I'm pulling the clay up and around that piece of glass so that I make sure it really adheres in there. And if you want to make an eyelid on top, you can do that too. And I'm just going to put that directly into the clay and I will neaten this up once I get both of them in there. So I'm just squishing that into the clay and pulling the clay up and around the sides. He has a bit of an evil Cheshire cat look right now. I'm sure a few of you are looking at that saying, is she making a bat or a Cheshire cat? Could be either one. Here I have a fresh pencil eraser, which gives a completely different look, this nice clean edge, and all I'm doing is blending it in. So if you don't happen to have a clay blender, this does the exact same thing. It just takes a little bit of time. And however you want to blend these, whether you want to use the pointy end and give it all this texture, or whether you want to have it really smooth, that's up to you. I like the texture personally. Just have fun with it. And if you want, you can create little eyelashes or a lid on the top here. Now this one has less clay, so I'm just going to take a tiny piece of clay and push it in there. definition I have some black eyeshadow here and some green eyeshadow and I am just going to give him a dirty nose and some shadows and just kind of mess him up a little and I have some green hair I just want to put the green on him kind of give him a little bit of a different feel. If you don't have pastels and all the fancy stuff, eyeshadow is the exact same thing when it comes to polymer clay and it, it will work so many ways and so many women throw away so much ugly eyeshadow that is fantastic for polymer clay. And I have some nice pink I can use in the ears here on the mouth. see how that ugly eyeshadow changes that completely but there's one thing that we're missing Let me... now we will have to glaze this because of the eyeshadow on it but that'll only take a second now I've made some blood and blood is just liquid clay with one drop of alcohol ink and you can see this was literally one drop of liquid clay too it was hardly any and this is like a huge amount of liquid clay but this will make such a difference. You will get it now. On my teeth. Now he looks like a scary bat. Much, much more fun. And if you wanted the blood around the eyes, you could do that. You can add it anywhere. And the nice thing about the liquid clay is it will dry a little bit shiny, so it'll give more of an effect to it. Oh, I will bake this according to manufacturer's directions. I have some of my other ones out of the oven, and I'm just going to cover them with this little Sculpey glaze, and that will keep all this eyeshadow intact because I don't want this to rub off slowly or eventually. And it's so small you barely can see it. You see right there that small dot, that is a hole. Now you can add, I'm going to add another hole over here on the other side of the ear. I will add one at the top of the center here and 
I'm not sure if I'm going to add them on the chin or not, but if I were to add them on the chin, to add more definition, I would add two, one on each side, so that my stitching looked like it was part of the design. Now, to drill it, I'm just using a standard household drill. This is the smallest bit I can find. I really don't even know the size of it, so if you ask me, I can't comment. Um, it was just one that I've had for over 20 years. It, they last that long. Hold my drill and press on it. Polymer clay is pretty soft, so no, it is. it will not drill my finger. I would feel that before it did. It just looks like that at the angle. And now you can see I have both sides. I will continue to drill this and come back when we start to sew it. Now that I have my face all drilled out and baked, I am just going to make the body. And for the body, I'm doing basically kind of a rough teardrop shape. And the easiest way to get the idea of what I want is to draw it out. This is some felt. I've already made some other bodies with black velvet and they made a mat natural disaster. So the felt I think will be a lot kinder to work with and the black did not film out well because the, it was shredding everywhere, but the felt I know won't shred. So I'm just taking a jelly pen, which will show exactly where I'm at. And I want this a little bit larger. I have not made a pattern because with each head I made, I've made them all a different size. And I just need something similar that the face will fit on and I can create a body. Now remember, you're going to have a selvaged edge here. So it will be a little bit smaller than what you start with. And I have two pieces, one on top of the other, and I'm going to cut them together. The easiest way for me to do this is just take a straight pin. This is a corsage pin, but it'll do the trick. And that way I can cut around this. And I just want to leave a little edge. Now you can use any kind of fabric you have. If you have an old shirt with a hole in it, you could use that. That would work perfectly for this. You don't need to go out and buy something just for this. I happen to have some felt sitting around and so I wanted to use that up. This is just some regular cotton thread and a needle. Draw this out for you. I'll start here and I'll end here so that I will sew all the way around this and stop at this spot so that I can turn this inside out and stuff it. And the easiest way to start is just a little bit past my mark. Now you could sew this on a machine and since not everyone has a machine, I'm just going to show you the simple way you could do this just with a needle and thread. And what I'm doing is a back stitch. I'm going down and coming back up backwards. So I'm basically restitching the same area. And that just makes it tight enough that I don't have to worry about it falling apart when I go to turn it inside out. and cut off the thread just because I was running out of thread. Now before you turn this inside out, you must clip all of these little round pieces here. And I'm going to leave this spot here that I need to sew on the inside unclipped only because I'm afraid that it will get a hole in it and it'll be too hard to sew that together. Now I'm just simply going to turn this inside out and this can be a little bit tricky, but just be patient and sometimes a pencil works really good or a chopstick at helping you turn it inside out if you don't have fingernails like I do. Now we have it all turned inside out and it's time to add the face. I have some gray thread which won't show up very much on the face and hopefully you can see it. And I'm just going to place the face approximately where I want it and just literally sew it into place. So the easiest way to start out is just make a locking stitch, which is just a back and forth stitch. I always like to make this just to get my needle started. So if things come out, I don't have to have them coming apart. 
Now remember, the nice thing about using black is you can just take a Sharpie marker if your um, stitches do show on the fabric and just dye and just color it with a Sharpie. No one will even notice it. So don't beat yourself up if you have a little slip up with your needle there. And I'm just simply going to sew this in place. Now it get, does get a little bit tricky here. So I'm sorry if the angles on the camera aren't perfect for everybody. And I like two stitches in each spot so I know it's not going to move. Now the alternative is you could just glue this with E6000. thread I'm going to just leave it on this edge it will make it much easier for me to sew this body part up now I did make a stitch that grabbed in the back don't worry about if you make a mistake like that I'm going to just cover it with a little black sharpie I'll show you how I do that and that is where the wings will go anyway but to stuff this you can stuff this with an old napkin cotton balls here I've got the little pieces of felt so you don't have to go and buy stuffing for something so tiny. You can just use whatever little things you have around. Toilet paper, tissue, anything. And I'm just going to use the back of my pen to push it all in here and I will continue stuffing this up so we can stitch him tight. And these are just the scraps of my felt that I'm going to use to stuff him. too bad that I stuffed it. I wanted to sew a little button on here and I'm going to do that before I seal this up on the side. There's still no problem that I could do this. Any little decorative bit or bauble you have. I have a lot of little black buttons. I just like to use this as a decorative piece. If I had, if I didn't have any, I'd make a polymer clay one or a polymer clay piece that I could put on top of this. It's the little details that I like so much. Now to stitch this up, you're basically just going to go from side to side, grabbing a little piece of fabric and stitching it together. Now to create the wings, I'm just going to use some 18 gauge wire. I happen to have black wire and I'm just cutting a piece that's a little bigger than I want the wings. And so I'm creating sort of a circular piece so I can kind of get the shape of the wings. And then I'm just going to twist this top together so I can make a loop out of it. So I have this in this nice circular shape, which gives you an idea of the size of the wings, which is pretty much what I want. Now I want the wings to point at the ends here. And so I'm just going to take my wire and shape it into those points. apart like that don't worry because when we sew some lace on it we're going to sew this together that it stays together this is just keeping it together for you for now and if it's easier take your pliers and just twist it with the pliers but create the wings to talk to you now you will be able to bend them more once you get them covered with lace but you will not be able to get them wider so whatever width you want Decide on that now and what exact shape you want decide on that now because that will remain the same so imagine him more like that and This filled in with lace to fill the wings in I want to add some lace to it and I have this piece of lace You could use a piece of lace from a blouse anything This was a piece of lace trim I had and 
Obviously it's way too big. I'm just going for the darker portion of this. So I'm going to use this bottom portion. This is gray embroidery floss and I'm using three sections of it. It comes with, it's six sections. Let me pull it apart and you can just separate it into how many you want. Some people like to use two, one, four. I'm just using three of it, which is basically half. So I just untwist it. And I'm going to do a rough sew around just to get this adhere to the spot. Now I have it all sewn around and it's really hard to see and I have it crooked on here, but don't worry about it. around this and I'm leaving a little bit of an edge. So you can see there's an edge here. I'm intentionally leaving about an eighth to a quarter of an inch of an edge and I will just sew that down when I go around it doing a blanket stitch. Now that I have all the edges trimmed, I am just going to do a blanket stitch which is going to make this look a lot more decorative around the edges. And to do that, I kind of want this to be rough and homemade looking. So I'm making a stitch and I'm picking up that last stitch, just going through it like Girl Scouts. And so I'm just continuing up and going through that thread and just pulling it. And that creates that little line of thread at the edge here. Now I want this to have a homemade country kind of a look, which I'm basically achieving completely here. And I'm just going to go around it and it will make this look so much more finished. And if you want to add more stitches or make it closer, feel free. This is your creation. And as you notice, it starts to take that edge of the lace and just pull it down. sewn around the edges it's just a matter of attaching it to the body now before earlier I made a stitch through the body and I said I was going to cover it with a little sharpie I wanted to show you where I cover all the stitches with a little sharpie so if any of this bothers you and you don't have black thread there is an alternative if you have a sharpie and look at how it instantly just makes that gray thread disappear so on the edges here where I've got it too close, just hit it with a little Sharpie. And now I'm just going to take the same thread that I have left and sew this onto the back here. Just a few stitches on the top and a few stitches on the bottom. And that's all there is to it. these wings you can bend them up if you want them to come over in the front you can leave them out you can wobble them up you can create them to wrinkle however you want that's the neat thing about it now how do you want to hang this that is totally up to you you can hang it that there's a hanger off the head 
off the back of the wings or even off the top of the wings. How you want it to hang is really your choice. I just simply use some embroidery floss to create the hanger. And here is our finished bat, but you know I never make one of anything. I always make several. So here, and here is his cousin, Batley. She likes to swallow the blood rather than leave it on her teeth, but she's got a little bit sparklier eyes because I use sparklier nail polish. This is his cousin, Ludlow. Ludlow likes to fly low. But other than that, he is a mean little bat. He will chew your face off. So I hope you have lots of fun making these strange little creatures and have a wonderful, happy Halloween.